Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about the summer and safety for our children and our teenagers in our community. And we want to be sure that we have a good summer for all of us. So we have some wonderful tips and we have some wonderful guests. So first of all, I'd like to introduce um, Don Smith, who is the Putnam County Sheriff. Welcome, Don. Thank you so much for having me, Sandy. And you, you uh, are the sheriff for all of Putnam County. The sheriff all for all of Putnam County, and uh, it's a great county, and it's great to be part of the Hudson Valley, and uh, it's great to be in Westchester, our good friends to the south. Right, because we're in a Westchester studio. And also we have Ed Walker, who is an Austin Student Resource Officer. Welcome, Ed. Thank you for having me, Sandy. And you go in and out of... Um, a number of the Austin schools? Yes, I have seven different schools that I oversee, and I'm in and out all day trying to build uh, relationships and meeting with the teachers and also meeting with the uh, their CERT team, sorry, which is our security team for each school. Right. So, so you're in school, and that's one time of year, but we have this summer that comes along, and some of the kids are might be in summer school, but uh, the majority of kids are out. Um, a lot of parents are working. I can't imagine it because I know when my children were out of school, I, well, I, I was working a little bit. I was at home, but I was still working. And I remember uh, the difficulties of making sure that everything went well. So, uh, Don, what are some of the issues that we have to deal with in the summer? What, what do we look for? What are some tips? Well, Sandy, first of all, I think in your opening comment, you just mentioned something that is very, very important when you mentioned parents. Mm -hmm. Because I think the whole key to the summer safety involves the parent relationship to their children. And it's all about communication. It's about supervision. It's about knowing what your children are doing, knowing where they are, knowing who their mm -hmm. friends are, knowing uh, how they're being supervised if they're not under you know, parental guidance at the particular point in time. I think that's absolutely key. And I don't believe parents can talk too much to their children about making sure that they provide them feedback, what's going on in their lives. And uh, we all know the summertime is one of the most wonderful times of year. We have uh, long days, we have beautiful weather, we have all kinds of activities. But with these long days and with all this leisure time and vacations, there are mm -hmm. certainly safety concerns that I'm sure we're going to talk about here today. Right. So, Ed, you probably do you feel the same way. What is the most important thing that um, you think we should deal with with our, our children out of school? Well, I think since, since we know summer's coming every year, I think the mm -hmm. important thing is right about March, April, you want to start to plan for the summer. Um, you want to figure out what camps your kids are going to go to. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe network with your neighbors as well as other people in your community or in your immediate community and your neighbors. You want to find out, um, you know, who's going to have kids going to what camp, uh, where you guys are going to meet the bus at, can we carpool, mm -hmm. uh, what parents are off what weeks, maybe to help out with watching the kids. But I think, it's, I think the biggest part is going to be planning, making sure you know, have something planned for the kids each week mm -hmm. and, uh, and give them a time frame, especially right. when they have downtime, know where they're right. at and what they're doing. So it's, it's kind of like real structure. I mean, schools have structure. Um, so you're saying, I mean, it, it, it's a looser structure, but, but still to structure the day with your, with your kids. Yes. Yeah. And so, Please. Don? Well, Ed mentioned about you know, the, the neighbors and who your mm -hmm. children are going to be with. And I think that is, that is a very key point because it's important to know who your children are going to be with, who their playmates are, uh, where they're going, and uh, you just have to, to make sure that, uh, that they're able to tell you what they're doing and that they don't fall in with the wrong people because mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a very, very important part of their safety. Right. So what do parents do if they find that their children want to go to a certain home? And, and you're not really so sure about that home for the afternoon to play. You don't know the parents. You don't know what's going on. Is, is, there, a, you know, is there some way that um, 
the mom or dad of, of the child can connect with that home? Do they, they call ahead and be sure that somebody isn't working and not mm -hmm. home? I mean, what, well, what does one do? I, I would rather be an overprotective parent, be mm -hmm. criticized mm -hmm. for being overprotective, and maybe be criticized as being a little too strict uh, because we're our children's parents. Of course, now I'm a grandparent. We're not, their, we're not their friend. Maybe as they get older, they may think of us as a friend. But we have to uh, sometimes use tough love. And when it comes to uh, where our children are going to be, and particularly if we're not going to be around, I would think it would be very appropriate to introduce yourself to your children's uh, friends' parents, to even stop by and say hello and make sure that you all have you know the same ideas on what are appropriate activities and to make mm -hmm. sure that your children are, are in a safe place and like I said I, I I believe on erring to the side of being overprotective. Mm -hmm. um, just to piggyback on what Don said I also think if it's a parent or, or a situation that you've never dealt with before I would probably not let the kid go. Mm -hmm. um, also we have the cell phones these days right. so the communication is much better so even if they're mm -hmm. outside the home there's still a communication there uh, most of the phone services have, have now a locator for your child. Um, but I think once you set the foundation with your child and, and, and if you've built on that foundation over the years, I think you can, there's going to be a trust there, mm -hmm, a trust factor. Mm -hmm. And you're going to know um, what your child will and will not do, what the rights and wrongs are. And, and if that's there, I don't think you have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But as far as going to someone's home that I don't know, uh, that's definitely a no. Right. I would just like to reiterate what Ed said about mm -hmm. saying no as a parent can be very hard. That's hard, right. It is very right, hard. hard. Oh, mom yeah. and dad, every, everybody does it. Well, <laughs> not everybody does it. And, you know, I'm doing what's best for you. And so I think Ed's point about saying no until you have checked out the situation and you're comfortable. If you have a bad feeling in your, in, in your gut, Mm -hmm. that something's mm -hmm. not right, then I would certainly go with your mm -hmm. feeling until you can prove otherwise. Right. So what about, I, I was talking to Ed earlier in the day and saying, when I was a kid, I just remember, you know, my mom said, go out and play, and we went out and played, and we were in empty lots playing games across the street. I lived in Mamaroneck, and, and we go out and play baseball in the street, and we just, you know, take our bicycles and go everywhere. Uh, I'm not sure whether I ever told my mom, I probably did, you know, I'm going up this direction toward White Plains. Um, but so how do, how do parents deal with their children now who really want to go out and play or want to ride their bikes or, or get on their roller skates or whatever they're doing and you're not really sure? Are we back to that phone? Well, I this is a delicate balance, uh -huh. depending on the age of the child. Um, you want to give them a little bit of rope to mature, mm -hmm. to grow, mm -hmm. to even inspect their own foundations that you've built for them. Um, but at the same time, we, we want to be safe. Um, as when I was growing up, we were all over town. Nobody had any right. clue. Just be home before the street right. lights come on. <laughs> um, I think those are, those are days of the past, uh, if, we, if, if we're really going to look seriously at today. But I also think, once again, the communication, the foundation being set, and, and what you've instilled in your child will, will, will shine through as things begin to grow and they begin to move mm -hmm. on and grow. So I think it's going to be an age-appropriate um, response as well as what I've built or what mm -hmm. parents have built. Right. So I guess it's a little different if somebody is driving a car as a teenager. I don't know what the rules are parents need to do certain things with with the taking of the car and I, I remember my parents setting very strong guidelines they they had to know where my car was going to be and when that car with me in it was coming home um, and I actually um, I think I kind of did battle with my parents I thought that was over control mm -hmm. but when I look back on it later on I said you know what they really cared about me and a car is a dangerous thing which I think a lot of teenagers probably uh, don't think about. Is there there's something about that age group? Well, you know, Sandy, you have just identified, in my view, and I believe Ed would agree with me, at least up in Putnam County, 
-hmm. A car is certainly a wonderful thing. And in Putnam, uh, we talked about it before we came on the air, that there's not a lot of public transportation in, right. in Putnam. So a car is just essential and it's a wonderful thing. But as I tell Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and Brownies and anyone who comes and visits the Putnam County Sheriff's Office, one of the questions I ask the children is, what is the most dangerous thing in Putnam County? And the children will, will you know, answer, you know, a bad man, a bad person, a robber. Mm -hmm. And then I say, well, what's most dangerous statistically in Putnam County is something that's right out in the parking lot. Yeah. And then they get mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. it's an, and sometimes they get it right away, that it's the automobile. When you think about statistically people being hurt, it's from an automobile. It's from not wearing a safety belt. It's from driving dangerously. And as we know, our youthful population, which represents, uh, you know, 7% of the driving population, they comprise 18% of injury-related crashes. So that tells us something, and that's from uh, driver inattention, you know, and that, that mm -hmm. pertains to mm -hmm. all of us. It pertains to uh, unnecessary risk-taking. It could pertain mm -hmm. to, unfortunately, on some occasions, alcohol and drugs. Uh, and so it's just very, very important that when we allow young people really anybody to have a car, mm -hmm. uh, that they need to know the rules of the road and they need to adhere to safety. And that's a parental responsibility. Right. That is definitely a parental responsibility. And, and just um, going with somebody else, I mean, we've made more limitations now by state law about the age when, when you can have your friends in your car, but there was a point where, where you can. And if you know that your children are going with somebody else in a car, again, what do parents do? Is that another checking out, Ed, who, who's the driver? I mean, you know, that's complicated too. Well, normally the driver is going to be someone who was a childhood friend. So you'll, you'll, you'll have the gist of who's going to be, who your kid's going to be riding with or who's going to be driving because you, you know who's turning 16 because you've been to a few mm -hmm. birthdays that they were growing right. up. And you can pretty much set that in the home. You know, you're not to dr ride with uh, Johnny Smith because I know, I know he was a dare taker. Mm -hmm, at a lot of the mm -hmm. birthday parties we had. So I think you can you can nip that in the bud early on. Um, and at the same time, if you have a responsible child and they are a driver, maybe you speak to them about being more responsible and being the designated driver for your friends. If, if you guys are going out, I would like you mm -hmm, to take mm -hmm. my car and I expect you back by such and such time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I felt very safe when my daughter at Austin High School was the designated driver for everybody. And I thought that was, I mean, I don't know how she got into that, but she just was. She was never into uh, drinking anything, or she today. But mm -hmm. but she was really helpful Having a for her friends. Mother. No, <laughs> it didn't. No, she just she just picked that up. I, I don't really? know. There was a program going on, and and they must have been asking for people to sign up, I suppose, to be the designated driver in, in the high schools wow. and, and so on. Of course, you know, many of the problems occur around proms, which isn't our time when we're doing the show, but I'm sure mm -hmm. that there's, you do a lot of public relations about the prom times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Sandy, you, you bring up a good point and uh, about knowing about certain children and who are the risk takers mm -hmm. and who you can trust. Uh, I'm very proud to sit next to Detective uh, Ed Walker here because Ed is a school resource officer and I, th I believe he's been one for about seven years. And I can just tell you, our school resource officers in the schools and in, in Putnam, uh, I have nine school resource officers and I have some special patrol officers. But in particular, the school resource officers, they spend time, you know, teaching the children. They are, mm -hmm. they are teachers, uh, they're, they're, they provide safety in the schools, they provide counseling. They are a good resource for mm -hmm. parents. I think in addition to talking to the children, they can provide mm -hmm. good feedback uh, to, you know to the parents without violating any mm -hmm. ethical relationships mm -hmm. and uh, th th they are role models and, and and I think they they make safety is is no longer uncool mm -hmm. and I would just mm -hmm. I would just r remind parents that uh, don't be afraid to talk to your school resource officer mm -hmm. uh, right so they can call you up Ed and say they have some issues they'd like to talk with you about? Well, fortunately, most uh -huh. parents have my cell phone number, so they do oh, call they do. on a regular basis. <laughs> yes, they, well, I have the kids in D.A.R.E. also. Right. So I build a relationship from third grade 
right on through. So we have a great relationship in our village. Right, which is which is really helpful. So how do we deal, uh, um, Don, you had mentioned the identification or, or tracking children. I know there's the Operation Safe Child Identification Program. I, I think when, when people go to fairs and so on, mm -hmm. or they can just probably go to the police stations, um, can, what do they do with their children on that? Well, Operation uh, Safe Child is, is a wonderful program. It's a program that was uh, conducted by the Department of Criminal Justice Services a few years ago, and the Sheriff's Association, the New York State Sheriff's Association, we, we took mm -hmm. over the management of that program a few years ago. And, and that's a program where, uh, and, and you know, you visit the 4-H fair every summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's at the 4-H fair. It's at a number of uh, our town days. It's at a lot of uh, functions where we have, uh, you know, a lot of people attending. We, t we have the uh, program offered. Basically what it is, it's a program where we can take the picture of the child. We can gather the, 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 the biometrics on the child. We can have them on file at mm -hmm. at uh, you know at the state level, and if a child turns up missing, uh, and law enforcement gets notified, people could be at Disney World. They could have uh, no mm -hmm. pictures of their child with them. Automatically, the Division of Criminal Justice Services and the New York State Sheriff's Association, we can help provide the information that's needed to help law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, right. Operation That's Safe right. Safe Child is a wonderful program, and it's one as you know we we have many opportunities in Putnam County to uh, mm -hmm. to participate in. This that is program. a national program. It, it is a national, national? pro. It is a national program, but w the the program I'm talking about mm -hmm. is specific to New York State, obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one that that we operate under. And a nice thing about it is, uh, you know, this information is, uh, is is safeguarded. The card, if the card were to be lost, or normally issued a couple cards, there's there's no address on the card no. that that someone that mm -hmm. if the card fell into the wrong hands, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't cause a problem. So it, it's really a great program. It's been well thought out. Uh, the, the program is, is, uh, is uh, last I knew, was pretty much across the entire country, but the, the specific program we're talking about here is throughout mm -hmm. the state of New York. One of the things I remember about identification is, are, are we supposed to be putting names of our children on our jackets and our book bags and all that kind of thing? Is that something that is not suggested? I don't know. Is that just something that I've heard? It doesn't really matter. I would say it's a sign of the times. You may not want to, but uh, mm -hmm. identifying a kid's jacket or book bag or something being lost in the school, I mean, you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we can't put the kids in a bubble. Right. You know, right. so I, I think we still should, should err on the side of safety, but we don't want to go too far. We want them to feel mm -hmm. comfortable mm -hmm. in what they're doing and what we would normally do. Right. But just to piggyback on what Don's saying, that there's two other aspects to the identification plan, which is one is um, online safety. Okay, as well as knowing your neighborhood, and, and I think those are two important aspects. As we know, um, online is just, it's like an amoeba. It just keeps right, changing right. day in and day out, and to try to keep up with that is just, it's just abnormal for something to change mm -hmm. that fast, mm -hmm. and uh, our kids are a part of it. Um, they know it in and out, and they're way ahead mm -hmm. of us, and I, I think that's one of the learning curves that we're going to have to stay on top of in the future. Right. That's really true. And if they're um, child abusers in an area, that's all up on, oh, yes, on the Internet, yes. so you know who is somewhat around neighborhoods. Um, not perfect, but, um, but you have some sense. All right. Summer. Water. I just read an article about how many children don't know how to swim. And I don't know whether all those children that don't know how to swim are near water, but you hear stories every summer, fall, whatever. We have in Croton a wonderful gorge, and everybody loves to walk up that, and somehow people get in the water. It's actually not just children. It's adults, too. Um, do we recommend that people take swimming courses and recreational programs and you know, learn to swim? Well, Sandy, there there are many aspects to that uh, that question, but uh, I I do believe uh, that uh, we should, as much as available, we should try to have our children learn how to swim. It's it's certainly a wonderful skill. It's a wonderful exercise. We are blessed in the Hudson Valley with many bodies of water. water. Westchester <laughs> County and certainly uh, my beloved Putnam County. We have lakes and 
some of the most beautiful lakes and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and many yards have swimming pools. It's very important that, uh, that, that we teach children to swim, but we also need to know that uh, even people that can swim can have a problem. Uh, they can bump That's their true. head on a raft, they can you know, dive in, mm -hmm. sh they shouldn't do it, but dive in shallow water and, and hurt their neck. And so that buddy system, that mm -hmm. buddy system that we all mm -hmm. learned many years ago. Oh, always go never, with somebody. Mm -hmm. Never swim alone. Right. And always make sure there's an accountability that if there's, mm -hmm. uh, if there's eight people out in the water and they all have buddies and you account for everybody, you know, every so often there should be supervision. They shouldn't swim in an unguarded area. And uh, if, it's, if it's a pool, then parents need to supervise the pool. They need to follow their local codes with uh, fencing around the pool. There, the, mm -hmm. some, some municipalities even have uh, alarms when something, mm -hmm. somebody falls mm -hmm. in the water uh, that an alarm would go off. So uh, people need to, those codes are there for, for a purpose, but uh, the old buddy system and supervision are very, very important, accounting for everybody and just helping each other out. Right. That's important in the summer. And are there good summer programs like at the Osney Recreational Center that are, are good for children learning, you know, good learning skills that can take place? Yes, we have actually uh, six summer camps at the uh, Recreation Department. Um, just to piggyback the buddy program, we mm -hmm. have a, a kayaking module for the, the uh, sports camp. And what they do is they have a, a swim test that you have to pass in order to go kayaking. You also have a swim test in order for you to use the pool. If you don't pass, you have to stand in three feet. And I believe they have four mm -hmm. lifeguards, but they still use the buddy system as well in the three feet. Um, we offer a sports camp for ages, uh, I believe it's 11 to 15. And then we work our way down and the other camps, are a multitude of different sports trips, you know, as well as um, activities with paints and pencils mm -hmm, and stuff of mm -hmm. that nature. Um, but it's pretty extensive. I, I, I used to work at the rec, so, so I actually ran mm -hmm. the day camps for about four years. And it's, it's a wonderful program and we mm -hmm. fill up fast. Right. That's great, and I know every community has those, so um, those wonderful resource. One of our biggest problems, maybe not for our little kids, but our teenagers, is the whole alcohol and drug program, obviously. Um, what, what do you all do in kind of the law enforcement area to try to deal with this issue? It's a tough one. It's a really tough one. Well, Sandy, uh, this is an issue that, that I recently spent uh, an evening with uh, District Attorney Bob Tendy mm -hmm. and Judge James Reitz and myself. We were three presenters in a community forum hosted by Crisis in Our Backyard, mm -hmm, which was, mm -hmm. you know, you know the right. people who have yeah. sponsored that program and founded mm -hmm. that program. And uh, uh, my answer to you is going to be the same as the answer that night. I believe it's answer D, all of the above. Remember, we used to take tests, mm -hmm. answer A, answer B, answer right. C, right. answer D, all of the above. We're going to continue to enforce the laws. We're going to continue to use our narcotics enforcement unit to try to cut off the supply of drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to, you know, try to put drug dealers in jail. And if drug dealers sell drugs, that are deadly, for example, you know, heroin that's laced with fentanyl mm -hmm. uh, and, and someone dies, then I, I think they really should be held accountable. But we also want to, we also want to use education and awareness. We want to educate our children not to get involved with drugs in the first place. Those that have a drug problem, we want to treat them. We want to make sure mm -hmm. that they go into treatment mm -hmm. programs. And as you mentioned, alcohol is certainly part of this. So. We, we really need to do, to do it all, and I'm just so grateful that we have uh, Susan Salamone and, mm -hmm. and the Christian She's family, great. Christensen family mm -hmm. in Putnam County who have taken terrible tragedies mm -hmm. and they've turned it into something positive. And, and I know in, 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 in Westchester County, Ed, you know, they have programs as well. Nobody's exempt. No well, one, no nobody's one is exempt, exempt from the problem. No, no one. And we all have programs. So, is there something different Ed, that you do in the schools? Uh, well, education know? and communication. Right. Um, we still run a DARE program, uh, which for our community has been wonderful. Um, we're looking into another evidence-based program, um, hopefully to start next year. 
Uh, one of the problems with there is not following the kids through. So once they leave fifth grade, a lot of times they will not hear another word about drugs or the education mm -hmm. of drugs. Mm -hmm. In their health classes somewhat, but it's, it's not as strong. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for another evidence-based program to add to there where we all follow them through middle school as well as high school, and hopefully mm -hmm. I'll be teaching the class. So once again, it's education, uh, keeping your kids informed, speaking with them at home as a parent, and um, just it, it's a never-ending battle. You know? Right. And, and back to what we were talking about originally, you have to know where your kids are. Yes. And who who their friends are, I guess. I mean, they, I guess they can go out by themselves too, but but is it usually like a group of kids or do people individually get involved with this or is it both? It's it certainly, it's, Sandy, it's certainly, it's certainly both, but I, I, I think normally there's, there's peer pressure. Normally uh, it's, it's more of a, of a group activity. Uh, but there's one thought that came during Ed's conversation and, and your conversation as well, and it keeps coming back over and over and over, whether it's driving safety, whether it's mm -hmm. drugs, whether it's water safety, whether it's uh, stranger danger, mm -hmm. it all comes back. I keep hearing it from you mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. it's the thought I have as well, is it's all about communication. It's about supervision. It's about parental mm -hmm. communication with their children and it's about sometimes having to use tough love. Right, rules you and regulations. You can't always say yes, you can't always say yes. Right, because in the long run you can lose your child with with too many yeses, yes. you really can. That, that's a hard one. Um, Don, you brought some books that, um, I, I know you have a whole bunch of things, but sure. just show us a few on different topics that parents uh, can access. Well, I just wanted uh, all, of our, uh, all of our constituents to know, Sandy, that we're not just a part of uh, arresting people or enforcing mm -hmm. the law, we're part of the community. Uh, your police officers, your deputy sheriffs, your school resource officers, your state troopers, they're parents too. You know, right. we, we right. all have uh, children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And so we're into education and awareness programs. And in addition to what we can accomplish in this very brief time together, I just wanted uh, your listeners to know that we have all kinds of resources at the Putnam County Sheriff's Office, and I believe all police departments would have these documents as well. And just just quickly a couple, I have mm -hmm. a whole stack mm -hmm. here as you know, right. you know, on, on, on a, a teenage driver, you know, mm -hmm. what do you do mm -hmm. to help a, a teenage driver? You're not in this alone. Right, We've this all is a been, parental guide. This is a parental Parents guide. guide, right, and, right. And, and, and then, uh, not, to, not to go into every one, but bullying is something that the school resource officers play mm -hmm. a major role. They can certainly mm -hmm. help the children, they can help the parents, but there are also guides that we can provide to parents that will help them uh, understand this. And, you know, the, the summer safety, Sandy, there, were, there are just so many, so many issues. There's the mm -hmm. bulletin safety on the road, child mm -hmm. safety seats, which you know mm -hmm. at, the, at, at every uh, community event that we can possibly have a, a child safety seat. Right. Uh, instructor really at important. we we actually install the child safety. All right, seats. we're going to have to stop, but right. you know what? We didn't cover bu bullying. There's so many topics. Um, you've both been so interesting um, and given us a lot of tips for for our parents, our children, and for all of us to discuss in our communities. It's really important because we really are a community. We need to protect everyone. I want to thank you, Donna. I want to thank you, Ed, so much. And I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions about what we've talked about or need any information, just give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.